morning. So, we understand that evolution is an ongoing process. We should also understand that race is an artificial construct and, in fact, is entirely a product of the desperate desire of people for political reasons to distinguish us from them. Political, economic, social, whatever. In any case, and my camera's on an angle. Hang on. Yes. Race is artificial. It is a fantasy. It is a nonsensical idea. And the idea of race as an absolute, hereditary, biological trait really comes from the 1600s, so a little over 350 years ago. It was invented specifically to divide poor, small landowners against the ever-increasing ranks of slaves who were being brought in to the British and Dutch colonies on Turtle Island, which is now called North America. And these slaves were being used as forced labor on plantations, which were very profitable. But it was necessary to make it harder for slave revolts to succeed and to make it harder for slaves to run away. And the best way to do this is to take all these poor, pale-skinned European landholders who don't own anything. They're renting a patch of dirt that they farm. They're hard scrabble farmers in the hills desperately trying to eke out a meager living on the worst possible land. And it was recognized that they would be sympathetic to the slaves because the slaves wanted to overthrow the plantation system and the plantation system also oppressed and dispossessed the small farmers. And so you had all these Anglo-Dutch small farmers driven off of the best land and forced to live on the rocky hill country of Appalachia. And they couldn't make a living at it. There's no way you can make a living. People try to farm their still struggle. As with modern crops, modern techniques, modern everything. And they're still struggling. So, of course, they wanted access to the good land down in the valleys which had been turned into huge cotton plantations and rice plantations and sugar plantations and tobacco plantations that, in order to save money on wages, instead used slaves. <clears throat> and they realized that they couldn't use Irish slaves as much because Irish slaves and dispossessed workers were so similar that the dispossessed farmers would sympathize with the Irish slaves. But they discovered that Negro slaves from Africa were sufficiently different looking that it didn't take much to turn the Anglo-Dutch smallhold farmers against them. All you had to do was intimidate them with the idea that these slaves, these African slaves, were their enemy. They were dangerous. And you couldn't really do that with the Irish because they were, they were too similar. The Anglo-Dutch and the Irish looked so much alike that you couldn't tell them apart. That and there were free Dutchmen living on these farms, struggling to exist. But there were no sub-Saharan Africans. They lived in the lowlands where they were successful town people, up until certain laws were passed that dispossessed them as well and enslaved them. This is right around the time that the myth of race was invented, and more importantly, that the white race and the black race were both invented. Because previously, there was no white race. There was no black race. 
they were human beings, they were people. And the Spanish had a slave economy based on religion. If you were Muslim or if you were Jewish, you were a slave in the Spanish colonies of the New World. You had to be a Catholic. If you were a Protestant, you were also a slave. But that was much smaller. And the Spanish used enormous numbers of Muslim, Jewish, and Protestant slave laborers on their colonies in South America and Central America and the Caribbean. But the Anglo-Dutch, they had access to Irish Catholics who they exploited as slave labor. But they didn't want to use Irish Christians. And a lot of Irish Christians tended to sympathize with the Irish Catholics who were being enslaved. And of course, the uh, Anglo-Scottish also had a close affinity for the Irish, including the Catholics. So religion wasn't going to cut it on Turtle Island in the north. Religion wasn't going to work to divide the people against each other. But skin color could. And so through the use of almost exclusively African slaves, plantationers were able to create an entire slave society that was visibly distinct from the Anglo-Irish, the Anglo-Scottish, and the Anglo-Dutch. And they were also able to create a mythology about them, that these African slaves were savage beasts who had an insatiable lust for white women, and that if they escaped, they would rape white women. And who were white women? Well, they were the Anglo-Dutch, the Anglo-Scottish, the Anglo-Norman, the Anglo-Saxon, and the Anglo-Irish. That was the original white race. And of course, the Africans themselves were taken from a variety of backgrounds, some more genetically distinct from one another than the Anglo-Normans were from the Gallo-Celtic Irish. Who were considered separate races, but these Africans were lumped together as a single, quote, black race. And so the black race and the white race were both invented simultaneously by the same people, the same Anglo-Dutch, Anglo-Scottish, Anglo-Saxon, Anglo-Norman, and Anglo-Irish plantation owners as a tool, a political social tool to make sure that runaway slaves could not find sanctuary among poor pale-skinned European farmers living in the hill country, and also so that there would never be common cause between those impoverished hard-scrabble farmers and rebellious slaves fighting for their freedom. This was the invention of the white race and of the black race at the same time. And by doing this, these plantationers created the roots of everything that is wrong with modern America and indeed with much of the modern Western world. The concept of race has permeated so deeply that it's going to take a lot to extract it and get rid of it. So we have our work cut out for us. Getting rid of the concept of race, that's going to be a job and a half. Are we up for it? I'm up for it. There is no white race. There is no black race. There is simply humanity, all of humanity. And just as these plantation owners created a sickness among pale-skinned Europeans, they've also created one among their own slaves and the descendants of those slaves, who need to recognize their own distinctiveness, their own regionality, their own internal diversity, and run with it and rise. And no, I'm not doing the white savior thing because I can't fix you. I can't save you. You have to do this yourselves. And I know you can. I know you can do this. I know I have complete confidence because I am not a white savior. I'm not even white. I know, I've got a pale complexion. No, I'm not white. You can do this. 
and you will do this because you have to do this because nobody's going to do this for you. As for all you people who think of yourselves as a white race, well, I can smack you around. Because, yeah, having a similar complexion, I've actually got the currency that you will listen to. So let's get rid of this artificial division. Let's get rid of this notion that there is a white race and a black race. Because neither of these things exist. The fact that this white race can be expanded to include Spanish people in Spain, but not Spanish people in South America. That it can be expanded to include Irish Catholics. Yes, this was done in the late 1990s. And as a result, now Irishmen are all white. But quite literally, when I was born in the 1960s, only Irish Protestants were white. The Anglo-Irish and the Scots-Irish were white. The Celtic-Irish, the Catholic Celtic-Irish, were not white. They were Gallic. Yeah. Yeah. So automatically, if you can take a group that's been excluded from whiteness and declare these people are white from now on, you're dealing with an artificial construct. And the fact that the black race is more genetically diverse than the various peoples of Eurasia, that pretty much blows a hole in the idea of a black race right there. Because you're dealing with so much human diversity and so much human potential, which is being wasted on fear, fear that was originally created to ensure that wealthy plantation owners could exploit both dark-skinned and light-skinned people. Something to think about. There's no white race. There's no black race. We're just all people minding our own business, living our own lives. And we can be so much stronger if we work together than if we fight against each other all the time. Unity of humanity makes us strong. So let's have some unity among all of humanity. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. And tea is beautiful. <laughs>